don't do it. Do Never. not do it. <laughs> Never go on Goodreads. Save yeah. your soul. Welcome back to Deconstructing Damsels. I am your host, Jessica Hannon, and this episode we're going to be talking about Realsy Adams Go Deep, which is way outside my usual zone because, because it is about basically erotic romance, and you know me, but I am going outside my comfort zone, and Adele Buck aka Buchanan, has been nice enough to appear, and I will link all her social and all that information in the comments below, or not the comments. See, I've been on YouTube too much, sorry. <laughs> in the show notes. I hope you guys will enjoy it. I had a very interesting time reading something that's definitely not my usual speed, but it kind of gave me a little bit more overview, and there were some spots that are super spicy, so when we're talking about them, maybe don't necessarily have the kids around <laughs> on this one because it's pretty, yeah. I want to thank my patrons, the Elm Sisters, Kelly from Boobies and Newbies, Carrie from Muppet Profiles, and Marlena for supporting me. You guys are so awesome with that. And if anyone would like to support me, I will put that link below, but that's patreon.com slash damselspodcast because I am nothing if not consistent when it comes to marketing names. I have a few things to add for a few minutes before the episode, sorry. I am going to have an episode up on my YouTube channel, which I will link below. So it's not like a regular YouTube, it's not a booktube, but I'm using it to supplement the podcast, basically. Like, you know, there's going to be wrap-ups, and there's I've got like two unboxing videos there, and... You know, there's a playlist of all the episodes, and there's some really cool booktubers that I have found along the way. But, you know, I'm having fun with it, and like I said, it's not going to be anything major, it's just kind of stuff along the way. I also have at least three reviews on thedamselspodcast.com, and you can read those. Those necessarily do not end up on here, but I want to go ahead and, you know, give them some boost, and I talk about it, I break them down. I have... Big Bad Wolf, Love and Lockdown, and Hot on the Ice. Uh, all three of them are arcs as well, so some of them have come out, some have not, but, you know, it's pretty cool. I've also been participating in the Black Author Readathon, and I have that information coming up in the beginning of March because it's going to take me a little while because... The 28th is coming <laughs> when this drops, and I just have not had time to get any of that together. But I'm going to record that, and we're gonna, and I'm going to talk about it. I'm probably going to actually have an episode for that, as well as a wrap-up. A very small episode, probably no more than like 10 minutes about the readathon, because a lot of it's going to be covered in the wrap-up, but I want to bring that up. Because there were some books that just really surprised me, and I want to give them their due and give them a little bit of time in that, in that frame. So, March. I am going to be having a magic theme because March and magic kind of goes together. Magic March. I'm going to be talking about those. I have a few episodes. One of them is going to be a movie, by the way. So I have another one set back for later in the year, but I'm trying to incorporate some more rom-coms. If you guys want to talk about <laughs> some movies or anything like that, please do. Oh, speaking of movies, there is a rom-com bracket going around right now, and I will make sure to link that in the notes as well, because French Kiss should always win. I'm just putting that out there, because it's French Kiss, and it's one of the best rom-coms. I remember it from 20-something years ago. I mean, if you want to watch Meg Ryan be neurotic and Kevin Klein be an odd asshole, it's the perfect Com, especially when it involves Cartier jewelry. Okay, now I'm officially done. And <laughs> you guys can go to the next section. I hope you enjoy my conversation with Adele. It was a really fun conversation about an author I had never read before. And now it seems like everybody on BookTube has been talking about Go Deep, but I covered it back in December 
waited until February because it's lust month. And trust me, this book, so full of lust. <laughs> Enjoy. Okay, so I am here with... Adele Buck. There you go. <laughs> I didn't know if that was a cue for me or if you yeah, were just sorry. doing like a drum I, roll or <laughs> No, it's okay. Like I'm I'm actually like I, I realized you couldn't see it because I speak very much with my hands. And so I realized you couldn't see my hands because you know how like in the South like, you just speak with your hands. Uh, and so yeah. I was just like pointing at the screen. I was like, Oh stupid, you're not on Skype. She can't see you. <laughs> That's okay. I do that with Courtney all the time. I'm like, wait, Courtney knows my cues by now though, because this is like enough. I keep talking about Courtney on this podcast, but it's because like she just shows like she just shows she's down for whatever I want to read or do or do. So like at, at some point this year we're doing a breeds book by Laura Lee. <laughs> Cuz I made her start reading them one day cuz when we were talking about prim numbers I was like, "Oh, what about the cat book?" and I was, you know, I was talking about it and she's like, I was like, "It's Dark Angel fanfic gone wrong." And she's like, "Oh, I got to read it." So she read like 3 of them and so we're trying to figure out which one to read cuz I can find some online on eBay um, that are in English, I can find them cheaper than trying to get the like Kindle versions. So we're trying to go from there because it's really hard to find English books in Germany. Uh, I bet. That you can read. Yeah. This cheap. Yeah. Because it gets expensive real, yeah. real fast. So like, that's why I was like, I was very happy I had Kindle U for this book because mm -hmm. we read Go Deep. I keep, call I keep calling it Going Deep, but it's Go Deep. Go Deep, yes. Mm -hmm. But I keep wanting to call it Going. It's not. It's just, it just because it's like the, the I know, but it just it's like you're going deep, especially if you're playing with certain toys. There is that, and that <laughs> happens in this book multiple times. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we read "Go Deep" by is that Riley, Riley's? Real, I believe it's Rilsey. Rilsey's. Um, okay, but, Rilsey. Uh, I, I should have I should have checked with her about her pronunciation of her name before we started. And so yeah, apologies, I, Ms. Adams, uh, if if we are butchering your name. Um, if it makes you feel better, I butcher everybody's name. I try. I really try to get names right. It's. it's I, I do to too. Me. I just mouth, hand, body, mind don't go together. I feel bad every time I say it. Do I apologize like fourteen times? So expect more apologies, Miss Adams. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so yes. Yeah, so this is unexpected lovers number one. Yes. Presumably there will be more. I would assume there's going to be one for the friends. Yeah. 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 And so it was friends to lovers, mm -hmm. like childhood best, like from the womb best friends. Yes, because their mothers are best friends. And we're going to have to talk right. about these mothers because they're hilarious. Yes. They, they remind me so much of like, again, growing up in the South, which I know the Maryland is not the South. Not quite, no. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a conversation people keep having. I was like, it's not the South. It may think it's the South, but I promise you, Maryland is not the South. Um. But, you know, it was really interesting to to realize that I understood the mothers mm -hmm. in this book. Like, I actually really knew them. <laughs> like, I don't know them in person, but I knew them because I knew so many mothers like this. Mm -hmm. Because if you grow up anywhere near Atlanta, you know mamas like this. Like, it just, you're used to, like, mothers, like, being best friends and expecting, like, their, their like, kids to get together. It's just, like, the expectation of they're going to be family some way one way or another I, I feel like this is also though this is really uh, a staple of historical romance is having oh, yes. the, the families who are really invested in their kids getting together um so i think i think there's kind of a lovely echo of a lot of a lot of things here you know it is both very current um to, to what you're talking about but then it's also got this kind of you know nod to historical it's like, it's, it's that, I think it's part of like, I call it fam, found families next generation. Hmm. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Because it's like, you see like, like the moms here are best friends. And then of course their kids are going to be best friends. It's a good thing they had the same personality to get along with each other. Cause that would have been bad if they weren't, then right. it would have been enemies to lovers. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, it's like, but you can actually see it how like, and again, like I've seen that all my life growing up in Atlanta, like you see families of like family friends marrying family friends, you know, and then like their like kids marry like, you know, other family friends from some other group. And it's all one big extended family basically at any given time. 
Yeah. Yeah. So we had, I'm going to butcher this name too. I'm going to call her Navy because that's what he calls her. Uh, Navia? No, I think it's Navi. Not, yeah, is it Navi C? No. I, I don't know. I don't know how this. I had trouble with the name the whole time. I just called her like N. Navia. In my head. Yeah. Um, and then Xander. Mm-hmm. Alexander, but Xander. Right. I was like, I, I can at least say that one. I can say Tasha's name, Cole. I just struggle with names. It's, it's a whole thing I have. So it's not it's not just this book. Um, I I like the idea of like so. I was reading it and I was like, oh, because the the lead is a writer. And I was like, oh, never read the reviews. Yeah, right. Twitter tells me so. I believe them. Don't yes. read the reviews. This is I had a, I had a, talk about reviews. I had an author friend contact me on, on DMs a few days ago and say said, you know, please talk me out of going on Goodreads. I'm like, don't do it. Do Never. not do it. Never go on Goodreads. Save yeah. your soul. Yeah. And like and as reviewers you also feel kind of bad too because you're like on some level you feel bad because like you're being honest and you realize that and you also realize this person put a lot of time into it, but also it didn't connect. So you're like and, and you know, there's there also the old saw that that bad reviews will sell books to to, oh, to yeah. people who have different tastes from you. And That's so, true, especially in romance. Yes, I mean, if somebody, you know, like the 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 the, the famous slash infamous, couldn't get into it too much sex, uh, th- those those sell books probably those one star reviews probably sell more books than five star gushers. So you know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do? Exactly. What are you gonna do? But yeah, poor, poor, poor Lamb is is gone on her reviews, and she's you know called up her best friend because she's she knows she's spiraling, and and you know the funny thing is is that the other thing as as an author, by the way, I'm an author. I have a book coming out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's called you do. Acting Up. <laughs> and we're gonna talk about it after we. Okay. Um, it's also I have not forgotten to, that. It's, it's also friends to lovers, by the way. Um, <laughs> so. You know, the the other thing that was really relatable to me was, you know, you, when you you know that your work is not as good as you wanted it to be, and you know people are people are calling you out on it, and you're thinking, yeah, they're right. Uh, that's just that's painful. Hmm. So so yeah, I totally felt for her. And by the way, this book is set like a literal stone's throw from my house practically <laughs> i live in, in in the dc suburbs so um ah. so yeah i was i was like oh golly yeah no hey <laughs> that's just <laughs> over there <laughs> you're like i recognize this stuff yeah yeah so i know these is. cultural references <laughs> yeah no kidding right um you know and the, the whole the, the whole like resistance you know, Marylanders to go to Virginia and vice versa. Mm. That is a thing. It's mm-hmm. like, oh my God, don't make me cross the river. <laughs> I've only been to DC once, and it was when I was in fifth grade. <clears throat> yep. We did the usual, like, you know, DC crap. Mm. And so, and I say crap because we were on the bus, so literally my entire class that was on the bus saw nothing that the people in the airplane saw. Right. We didn't see the FBI. We didn't see the four. We didn't see the um the theater. We we didn't even see the mall. We saw the mall, but not the mall. Right. Like you know, so <laughs> we did not. Like I think the only thing we got to see that was on on the same level was we got to go to Mount Vernon. That was it. Yeah. So we we ended up going to like and, Baltimore. And Mount, I think Mount we, Vernon we was the, not in D.C. <laughs> I know, but they but they sent us to D.C. They sent us to Baltimore. To do stuff because they okay. didn't have anything for us to do in DC. There's so much free stuff to do in DC. I know, but my school did not take me there. That is very strange. Yeah, and usually it's funny because usually people say it's an eighth grade trip, so fifth yeah. grade is 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 different. Uh, yeah, we, we, I've lived in in, a, in the DC area for over 20 years, and so I get a lot of oh yeah, I went to DC on my eighth grade trip. <laughs> like okay, <laughs> it's changed a little. <laughs> Just a bit. Yeah, I mean, because my commute to work, I I cross the street and go, 
hello capitol building and then keep walking to work um oh yeah see so i'm right there i was when, when i commute to work I was which like, of course i don't know this was in like 1993 ish when i went so mm -hmm. it was like because i know that the um the elections had just happened previously like a couple months and then i think it was we weren't there for the inauguration but it was like i think it was like maybe four months after that or something so it wasn't that long after clinton took office because and the reason i remember this is again we went to th the mall as in like the shopping mall right and we had to go like spend time there because we couldn't go to the fbi building so we ended up going there and we saw and like i bought stuff with socks on it <laughs> like that's how i remember it oh, okay i bought a, i bought a tote bag with socks the cat on it ah that's how I remember it. Got it. <laughs> I was like, really? It was a very interesting trip. And like the whole trip up there, we were having to watch movies and we watched like The Wizard of Oz and Old Yeller. I'm like, this is great for fifth graders that are going on a 10 hour, 11, 12 hour bus ride. Ugh. Yeah. I Again, get a headache just thinking about that. Yeah. There was like... <sighs> With us and the chaperones, there were like two or three buses that they managed to not have anything for us to do. Okay. <laughs> All right. Like, I... How do you forget the bulk of your people <laughs> coming on a bus? Because I could have flown, but all my friends were going on the bus. I was like, well, I'll just go on the bus because my godmother was a chaperone. And I was like, okay, we can go on the bus. And then I was looking at it like, you know what? I should have flown. Apparently. I was like, maybe then I could have done something. Apparently. Yeah, because like I said, the only thing I can think of is Mount Vernon and going to the mall. Yeah. And I remember walking the streets. I have distinct memories of walking the street because we didn't go to the theater because we weren't on the plane. Group. The Ford so, Theater or? Yeah, the Ford Theater. So we yeah. but, so we went to the theater like, but but we saw the theater, but we couldn't go in the theater. I've been in the theater. <laughs> yeah, we weren't allowed. We weren't part of the group, even though we were part of the group. Okay. <laughs> they literally forgot to make plans for all of us and so like people talk about dc and i'm like you know what i bet dc is a great place it can be i saw like four things in like the four days we were there and oh no i tell you what, we went to the smithsonian we did get to go to the smithsonian yeah that's one of the great things that's free <laughs> yeah i know that was one of the few things we got to do was go to the smithsonian i just remember that because we saw the hope diamond that's how i remember it because my oh, godmother was like all googly eyed so but you so at like... least you at least went to the um, <laughs> the Natural History Museum. Yes. Because the Smithsonian no. is many many Huge. institutions. Yes. Many buildings. Wait. Also the National Zoo. Yes. Uh, See, we didn't, get to go, Smithsonian. Didn't, didn't get to go there. Only got to go to see the Hope Diamond one. Well, if you ever get the chance to come back, there's plenty to do. I'm glad. It may be a while though. Not only because yeah. of you know quarantine Germany. times but yes. also because flight flight yeah. delays <laughs> yeah indeed so anyway so yeah this book is, is set in the dc area uh mm -hmm. and just you know one of my uh good friends is jay fellas who also lives in this area and um and so you know, and her, I don't don't know if you've ever read her books, but you know, her books are so fantastic in terms of the way they show um, the black community in DC very specifically. And I felt that that Adams also went there um, with this and just, you know, I, 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 I saw, I saw people in this book that that I feel like I know. Um, yeah. uh, and and that, that just that made my heart happy. Um, but um but yeah this so friends to lovers which i do i do like it's funny because there's some people who just absolutely don't get friends to lovers and they they're and and the most the most common objection i see to that is well i just don't get why they didn't get together a long time ago and i think this is one of those books that it really legitimately shows you one of the reasons why that might happen because if you grow up with somebody like they did you know this person almost feels more like a sibling mm -hmm. and no you're not gonna you know it's gonna it's gonna take some different 
thinking in order to, to wrap your head around seeing this person as a romantic interest. Oh, and to add to that, like you also can see like where if you had ever thought it, it was easy to banish. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, like oh, I've known them for too long. It's, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And we can't, you can't think about it that way. You can't imagine it that way of happening. Yeah. Because it's just too outside of, it's too outside of, of what you know. Mm -hmm. Because like what happens if you hit the unknown and something happens? Mm -hmm. Like if friction tears you apart, you're not just losing your, like, your love interest. You're also losing your like emotional partner. Yeah, your best friend, and and yeah. and and they go there with that too. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it's it's definitely a concern for both of them. And it, in some ways, it gets borne out. Um, you know, not not to spoil the book for people who haven't read it, but you know, it's it's a pretty predictable thing to happen with a with a couple like this because and, i mean it's a romance so there's, there's well yeah so many <laughs> there's, yeah i mean it's how you get there is different but the steps are yeah kind well, of like written additionally there's there's a certain resistance to to vulnerability that's baked into a, a friendship like this because i mean one of the things I, I loved about what she she was doing here was she really showed us and in quite frankly and you know not that many pages um, so it's, it's impressive that, that I, that the depth that she, that she showed in terms of these two friends and their dynamic together and, you know, there's, they're teasing and they're joking and their, their comfort level with each other. Um, you know, you could see, I, I could see this couple, you know, in my mind's eye first as friends, very, yeah. very much so. Uh, and that's also, you know, if you're working in a, in a shorter in sort of more novella length um because i'm not exactly sure how long this book is but it's it's a, it's a fast read yeah um it's um that's another thing that if you've already got this established relationship it's it's a lot more believable to to have a you know full-blown romantic journey arc in fewer pages yeah well, and, so, and, you can, and in some ways you can actually shortcut some things because mm -hmm. of that, mm -hmm. because you've already built their rapport by just in general being, okay, they've been best friends. Here's like, you know, four or five, six times they've been, they talk about the past and here's what happened. And so it just, it kind of, you don't have to spend like the first like 50 pages building the. Getting to know you. Mm -hmm, and the also like, you can watch them more directly, I think. Yeah. Versus I mean, like an indirect watching. Some of and and oh my god! Also, that first kiss being awkward. Yes, just like, I love that. I loved that because these two are just like <laughs> are absolutely like, are we gonna really do this? Really? Oh, okay. And then it's kind of terrible, and then they have to, you know, decide. It really decide to try again because you know, golly, how you know how you know, uncomfortable making is that to have, you know, to know this person this well, to have that sort of fumbling first kiss and then decide, okay, well, you need to try it again and make, get this one right. Yeah. And, and I think that was important too, because sometimes in some romance, it can seem like everything is perfect mm -hmm. and it's decidedly not. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, in the later scene when, um, I'm not going to try to give too much away, but like when, you know, when, when they have the first incident with the uh, public displays. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, but you can see why she's like, okay, I, I trust this person. Mm -hmm. This is fun and great and fine. But also, this is the dude that, like, like put bandages on my, on my like, knees when I was a kid, right? Right. Because, like, like, you know, you know they probably – you know they were rough and tumble knowing these two and so you know that they were like always trying to like help each other you know do the do the childhood best friend things right you know yeah and and you can see where it's just like okay so i'm really into this guy now who knew apparently everybody but me right and then but then you like get there and you're just like oh this this is this is what it's like Mm -hmm. Because it's it's a different kind of new. 
Mm -hmm. It's not a new experience with a new partner. It's a new experience with an old partner almost. Because like they said they were like, you know, non-sexual soulmates. So. Right. And then, and that's the thing too. I mean, I've, I, at one point in my life, I, I was having sort of not quite deep thinky thoughts about relationships and I kind of came up with this idea of a, like a pie chart or a clock. And, you know, it's, it's like, at at that time I had this really good friend that I spent so much time with and, um, you know, I happen to be straight. She happens to be a woman. She's also straight. So it's like, I, I felt everything for her except that, that last piece of the pie, you know, I was like at 11 o'clock with this person. Um, and, and, and we would never get to 12. Um, and I had one of those friends too. Yeah. And, and, you know, if, if it is, if it, if it is a person that you could see yourself, you know, becoming attracted to, um, that last little sliver is, it might only be, you know, 10% of, of the relationship. Um, but it's, it's like more than 10%, you know what I mean? When you, like when you actually wait it out, that 10% takes up a lot of, of what it makes to make the full picture. Yes, exactly. Because like, I've, I've had that with a couple of friends. One was a woman, which made me wonder if I was bi for a while, but didn't really go that way um but i was you know thinking about it and then um i also had another friend like that and it was a guy and i was just like and we were way we were way more like we were a lot like like the the two leads in this book and the fact that like we would talk about things i didn't grow up with them but like we were really close and like I mean, when I say I knew his schedule, I mean, I knew how long it was going to take him to pass out after, like, jacking off watching porn. But, <laughs> but we weren't there. Right. Right? Like, we didn't do any of that, but, like, we talked about it. And so, you know, I was I was obviously, like, feeling some kind of way, and then he wasn't. And, you know, it was, like, three years on and off of this. But, like, we, like, we used to talk about him watching, like, um, Cinemax all the time and watching, like, you know, like the worst porn that was on it, like, you know, 3 a.m. mountain time, because <laughs> oh, I would still wow. be awake. And he was quite a bit younger, too. Mm. Not greatly, but enough that it was, you know, a little bit different. And so it was just one of those things of, okay, I could totally do something with him, but he can't see me that way, so I'm just going to, like, lock it away. And then he had all other kinds of issues, like, he had a lot of issues he had like he had rules about like not talking to mutual friends about him i'm like okay but the mutual friends are the only ones that know you i need some yeah. perspective every once in a while because this is getting kind of weird but like and then he, like he apologized anyway it was a whole long ordeal but you know it was off again on again for three years and so i i can understand like that when that that flip comes on because i didn't have it right away mm-hmm. you know it wasn't until you know we've been talking for like six months because we met on a comics board. Okay. This was back when Yabs was a thing, which um, anyone who knows Gail Simone knows uh, Yabs. But so it was this whole thing. And so I was around there for a while. And, like, there's just something about having that that flip. And, like, if you flip it on, mm-hmm. it's really hard to flip it back off. Yeah. Well, funny story about, about my thing uh, that I just remembered is that um so i'm scandinavian by extraction and um my grandmother was from norway you know she was Mm -hmm. she and so she and she had one of these very sort of like old world straight spine grandmothers right Mm -hmm. and so i was visiting her one day and she was asking me about like what was going on in my life and i was just like going on and on and on about this person and she looked at me with his very sort of correct spine and clear blue eyes and said, have you ever thought you might be gay? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, uh, you know, I'm not, but 
yeah, I could see why you think that. <laughs> I was talking about this person so much. <laughs> and I was like, wow, okay. That's, that was, that was very frank. I wasn't expecting that, but okay. <laughs> it's, it's like other people can see what you can't see, but sometimes they're misreading what you see and what you're explaining as well. Right. Well, I was just, I was clearly sort of not, you know, not, not necessarily obsessed with this person, but you know, we were just spending so much time together. And, uh, you know, I, I started, we've been hanging out for a year or so and I started going to law school and we still had, we had this, this absolute routine because I was living in Minneapolis at the time and we would go and there was a, a um, bakery cafe called Pam Sherman's uh, in, in Minneapolis at the time. I believe it's since closed. And they had just like really, really wonderful brunches. And so we would go, it was every Saturday, and we would go for brunch. And then, you know, before I went to law school, then we just kind of end up frittering most of that weekend day away. And when I started going and when I went back to school, I, you know, I had basically was like, I'm, brunch is still a thing, but then I have to go home and study. And so at one point, you know, like I, right after this started, I was sitting in my apartment and I was, I was practically having like a little mini tantrum in my head. Like, I can't believe I have to sit in the study and I, I miss her and I want to go do, you know, play with her. And, whatever, you know, like, and then I was like, get over yourself. Will you just buckle down and read this torts homework or you know whatever it was. And not 15 minutes after I did that, my, uh, my uh, intercom buzzed. And it was her. And she's like, I know you have to study, but I really, really wanted to see you again. I brought you a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> and I can see, to get back to the book, I could see Nevaeh and Xander doing something like that. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, and and, and it's, it, that's, that's the kind of thing that, like, when you have a sort of very, very good friend that you're on the same level with, it's like, they surprise you sometimes by how in sync you are. Yes. And that's just so much fun. That's um, when I was talking about the girl that I was like, not interested in, but I was interested in, Um, you know, we were very similar because we, we had very different backgrounds, but it was, you know, my first year of school, we were in the dorms. We were like across the rooms from each other for a while until she moved. Um, we were in the same, like at the, at the time they were doing like, um, I don't know if they call them like, I don't remember what they call them, but it's like basically like themes. So like we were in like the Latin American theme because we could get classes that we needed for that one. We couldn't get them any other way. And so we joined it. And we're like, okay, why not? So because we just met at the at the um uh the meet and greet thing. So orientation. So we met at orientation. And so we were just like we were so in sync. Like where you would see one, you'd usually see the other. And mm -hmm. she came with her other best friend, like her best friend she grew up with. But, you know, we ended up like being in sync in so many ways because of I was very like laid back like Xander and she was like very like present. You know what I mean? Like she was she was always like high energy, always going like she wasn't just sitting there doing like crossword puzzles, mm -hmm. you know? She was really enjoying her her year of freedom of after being raised by her grandparents, and it was just it reminded me a little bit of that too because it's like you need that balance, mm -hmm. and like because your friendship gets really close, and then you're just like, okay, I need someone to balance, and so you just inevitably end up balancing each other out a little bit because like I was much more rock steady. So, like, you know, we would have TV nights in my room and, like, half the, the like, dorm floor would join us. And then, because I was on the mixed, uh, the mixed side, so, like, we'd have, like, the boys floor was above us and there was us and then there was, like, the, like, RA and the like, kitchen and all that stuff below us and our part of the dorm. The dorm is no longer there. But it was built that way. And so, like, you know, the girls in the dorm would all, like, show up <laughs> and, like, you know, the ones in our little theme area thing would just, like, show up and would still watch movies. So I was, like, that person. And then she was the one that would drag me out and go do something. Mm -hmm. Be like, hey, you need to leave the house. You need to leave your room. But why, <laughs> though? There are people out there. Right, exactly. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, 
I had a, I had a college roommate who was very you know into clubbing and, and whatnot, and I was very not. And at one point, she said to me, "I don't get you. I don't get why you don't like to have fun." And I was just like, "That's a really telling statement, <laughs> right?" I, I'm like, "Well, I don't consider the same things fun as you." <laughs> like, like, but it's really interesting that you just assume that I don't like fun. <laughs> exactly, because you're like, I do like fun. It's just a much more subdued fun. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's without it's, a, it's without the lights and the music and making me want to hit somebody. And cover charges and sweaty bodies slamming around. It's like, no, no, thank you. No. And, and possibly getting, you know, drugs in your drink. Cause... Right. Well, this was before that was widespread. So. Oh, yeah. See, yeah, mine was. I was like, yeah, I'm an old. And, well, uh, I turned 19. I turned 19 my first year of college. I'd been there for like a month. I turned 19 because my birthday was 11 days past the deadline. Ah. And they wouldn't make an exception. I was like, OK, but I can I'm like like five years old and can read. Can we just stick me in school now? Right. No. So because my godmother used to go to the teacher stores and just buy those books and just would go over them all the time. And so I could do all the stuff that everyone in kindergarten could do. I'm like, why can't I go? Right. If there are arbitrary rules. Right. I'm like, I was born 11 days later. Yeah. You could I... give me a test and you can put me in the next grade, which would be kindergarten. It'll work, I promise. But anyway, anyway. so I was a little bit older and uh, this girl was a little bit younger. Like she had just turned 18. So, and like we would go to the club and we went to this one club because I didn't go to all the, I didn't go to clubbing with her all the time because I was just not that person. And I didn't want to, and like some of the clubbing areas were kind of like suspect. And I was like, uh, uh-uh. I love you, but no. So <laughs> I was like, no, but so we went to this one club and it was like, I guess it was, <laughs> it was like Thursday night and it was like a kind of small town. It was in, um, uh, Carrollton, Georgia, which is not small, but it was, it was small for the clubbing scene. And it was like a regular, like bar that had been turned into like a club during that night Mm -hmm. and so it was like a bunch of like you know 40 year old men that were trying to hit on all the girls that showed up and i was just like look i know i got big tits but that does not mean they're for you yeah Yeah. i I went to a very big college town and so there was this like sort of this dedicated street of clubs and bars that were practically on campus um, and they really didn't cater to the older crowd. Yeah, see, this one was like, well, to give you an idea of where Carrollton is, if you go about mm, 40 minutes or so, you'll be in Alabama. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> if that gives you any indication about how far away you really are. Yeah. And so it was about like two hours from Atlanta, so it was kind of in the middle of nowhere. And it was like it and like the next town over was Douglasville, and those were the two big towns in the area. Douglasville had the mall. Carrollton okay. did not. <laughs> so it's like, so it also kind of like, but it kind of fosters you to be close to people because you can't go home. Like I'd go right. home on most weekends because my roommate lived in the same county as me. So my godmother would just give me a 20 at the end of every weekend. And I would just give her the 20 for the gas because she had this big, like, you know, this huge SUV that she drove. And so I'd pay like 20 bucks a week and I'd come home. Right. But like during the week, you didn't have a way of doing things i couldn't drive mm-hmm. i had no license so the, literally there was nowhere i could go except that was in like within walking distance of this campus and like even the kmart was like a 35 minute walk so not really feasible yeah so um but i you know i'd give my again i'd give my roommate money because she'd take us to the store and stuff because like her her suv was like could hold like 10 people it's one of those huge ones because yeah. she came from a very large family and they like gave a Chevy her Chevy Suburban vehicle. or something yeah but it was like it was one of those like really huge ones like mm-hmm. the like massive size ones yeah because like her uh I, I think she had like five or six siblings one of them mm. was a brand new baby and she was 18 and then there was like her parents so you know she had this big vehicle and I'm like you took the big vehicle did they think to give you the little anyway um but so you had this big vehicle and so you were constantly like, it was great when you'd go shopping, when you had groceries from like four different people, it was fine because your groceries would not get mixed up or anything. Right. But, um, so we would do that, but like it kind of fostered this relationship 
Mm-hmm. And I kind of wonder with the with the leads in this, as it kind of fostered their relationship a little bit too. And and by that I mean like I wonder if like the closeness of their family kind of created this bubble for them. Yeah. That I, that maybe like uh, like other people don't get based on circumstance. Well, yeah, and and that sort of like sort of circles back around to you know that almost a sibling yeah. element to a relationship like this, and and that that and that is definitely an obstacle to overcome if if you are going to want to try to get together with them. And I mean. It, the the device for them you know getting together is you know her having you know her being an erotic novelist or and 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 having lost her mojo because she had a you know horrible cheating ex and she you know kicked him to the curb and she hasn't she hasn't gotten her rocks off and you know what like a year yeah Um, it was like a year and a half, actually. Yeah. And so, you know, and, and so he just basically jokes and says, oh, hey, you know, I'm here. And, and because, it, you know, conveniently, you know, he's when she calls him, he says, this is very early, so it's not really a spoiler. She calls him, you know, melting down and he's in bed with his girlfriend and she's convinced that the two of them are are sneaking around behind her back and his reaction is we're not and if you have a problem with my relationship with her don't let the door hit you on your way out right uh so he's basically you know sort of done and dusted on that relationship um and he makes this be a theme yeah because of how close they are Right. And it, apparently it wasn't really a problem when she was in a relationship as well. But as soon as she became single, every woman he dated, you know, including somebody who had previously been fine with their relationship, is suddenly suspicious. Um, and I mean, I. It's I, a Harry, it's a Harry when, when Harry, when Harry met was, Sally thing. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. I mean, and, yeah. and honestly, I had, you know, I, my best friend from college is a guy. And, um, his girlfriends hated me and i was always like uh richard and i are friends and we have been friends for a long time and i'll be here when you're gone (laughs) right like you're not a threat to me and i'm not a threat to you so why are you making it into a threat yeah and you know because because richard and i are again like these two we were doing we were the you know it's silly inside jokes finishing each other's sentence kind of friends and there is a certain i think for certain some types of people there's a a threat in that kind of intimacy even if it it doesn't translate to the physical realm right um because you can't get in it right that's that's a closed circle Mm -hmm. and you know fact of the matter is is that if you are going to have a relationship with someone who is very close to somebody that they might possibly be attracted to that's regardless of gender yeah if if you're the type of person who's going to be threatened by that nine times out of ten you're going to end up on the losing end of that relationship because that that friendship is is probably going to be more durable because your attitude towards you know that you're the fact that you are threatened by that literally makes you 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 know makes you brittle yes and it makes your relationship with your significant other brittle because not only are you threatened by something you know by by someone else but you're also essentially saying to your significant other i don't trust you right and And a relationship cannot survive that and like it's okay so it's understandable if they don't if they don't trust the the best friend that's that's to me that's a little bit more valid because you don't know them that way, but you have to trust your partner exactly to believe in in your relationship and your feelings and your thought and everything else, and sometimes they don't and that's a big problem. Yeah, it's a huge red flag. Um, we see it on the, Am I the Asshole all the time. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know, and just if if, if there's no trust, there's no relationship. Uh, at least not, you know, not not in the even medium term, let alone the long term. Uh, and giving people ultimatums about 
things they care about is also never a good idea. No, because um, you're never going to win that. No. Um, and it, it's, it's also, it's manipulative and nasty. <laughs> so yeah, so see, seeing that, it, it definitely struck a chord. Definitely. Poor Xander is just like, he's not going to win if he's going to be dating this, this type of person. Right. And like, and that's, I think that was part of his problem too, is he wasn't learning from that mistake when it came to dating. Cause you, cause like when you were listening to Cole talk, you could hear him say like, this is a pattern basically with you. Like right. you're, you're picking women who are always going to be insecure about your relationship. And you know, who knows if that, who knows if that wasn't actually a sort of a subliminal choice mm-hmm. because I, maybe, I think it was because maybe he was waiting for her to, you know, for, for the two of them to spark instead, you know, so he's, he was continually, you know, if you make a mistake, a bu- the same mistake a bunch of times, that's intentional. Right. Subconscious or not, there's an intent to that because it's exactly. a pattern and, and patterns exactly. are mappable for a reason. <laughs> right. There's a reason why therapy always talks about what are your patterns. Right. Let us break these down and see why you're making these mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it's, 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 it's funny cause it's, you know, you have the, this, you know, past toxic relationship in her history. You've got this pattern of toxic relationships in his history and, you know, and they're, but they're also clearly able to create other kinds of, of relationships because he's got his relation, you know, relationship with not like Cole, but the people in his mm-hmm. band, um, they both have very rich friendship lives. Mm-hmm. Um, so with Tasha was is, is, yeah, as wonderful. Deep. And Tasha's, Tasha's little sort of boundary drawing, you know, like, I'm not ready to, to talk about, this, you know, basically she's getting divorced. Spoilers. Right. Um, um, was but it's just, very obvious in like the first like three chapters when you meet Tasha. Yes. So. Yes. Um, but I, her, I think sometimes in, in fiction, we, see a lot of data dumping from friends you know they, they, they there's a lot of discussion about everything and you know that does happen in life too so i'm not i'm not, yeah. I'm not dumping on this but i think i thought it was a refreshing choice to have tasha be like i'm not ready to go there yet you know yes we are we are really close and i tell you a lot but i just she needed time to process this is too too deep and too personal just to like dissect because it was right. it was ongoing at that time and it wasn't ending. Yeah, it's like let 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 me have my car wreck first and not try to narrate it in real time. <laughs> exactly, like we will go over this and we will cover this and we will like create our own worlds. But this is obviously, you know, something I have to put a boundary line, and I I respected that also because, mm-hmm. like, you know. Navy and and uh, um, Xander didn't have that, and that was part of the problem. Mm-hmm. When it came to you know mentor dickship, <laughs> <laughs> like it it you know there was a very big issue there because it's like well, you can't go ask the person you trust the most to give you the best answer, and that's part of the conflict with friends to lovers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I thought that was I thought that was a a very well placed you know, boundary line that they had to, they had to do themselves Mm -hmm. for the first time in 31 years, they had to have a boundary. Right. And they didn't really know what to do with that boundary because you can't turn to the person you always turn to for the best. Right. Yeah. And yeah, because despite the the clock face um, approach to, to thinking about relationships, no one person is ever going to be everything. Right. Because you, you can't need be. perspective, and you can't necessarily get that from somebody that you're that close to. And there's also like there's a lot of times when you read these kind of stories, you you see it, but they don't because they miss the blind spots. But you can see them quite quite easily, which is exactly what like you know Tasha, Cole, their moms were all saying was like you guys are missing like what we're seeing, right? Because we're watching you and like, we're more like, this isn't like a partner giving you this conversation. This is people that 
are outside of that romantic element and telling you that, that y'all, this is, <laughs> there's more here. Why are you running from it? Right, right. And, and, and that, that community investment in their relationship is also very real. And it is something that you see in Friends to Lovers a lot, because that's another sort of mini, mini trope in the Friends to Lovers canon, if you will, mm -hmm. um, that there is an invested community that, that is sort of rooting for this group, for this pair to finally get their heads out of their asses and figure <laughs> out what they, everybody else can see in like 3D Technicolor. <laughs> exactly. It's like you can't run from that. Right. No matter how hard you want to, you can't run from it. It's not runnable. Right. Like you, you're just putting off the inevitable. Like eventually, even if they hadn't gotten together, they would have had to have that conversation. Right. Because it was ruining too many of their other relationships. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah. they, on both sides, they were both getting like people that were very not fit for that kind of intimacy outside of the bedroom. Right. And it, it was very interesting because it's like, you could also see that Xander knew her enough on how to use that knowledge in his mentorship mm -hmm. to kind of help break her out of her role because he knew her so well. He knew what she would like walk the line on, but never go past mm -hmm. like the scene in the restaurant. <laughs> we cannot spoil that, but no, we're not going to trust but us. Like, when we tell you that there is a very hot scene in a restaurant that really reminded me, honestly, of uh, a Victoria Dahl book, which has, has something of a similar scene. Um, and that that one is um, it's it's the series that is good. Good girls don't bad boys do. And I think that it's it's the one that's real men whatever is the verb. I can't remember the verb of that one, but it's, but it's, it's real men something. And, um, and there is either in the prequel novella or in that book itself, there is a very, another very hot scene that's sort of verging on public indecency. Oh, see, what was funny to me is, is like, when I read it, <laughs> the first thing I thought of was, have you seen The Ugly Truth with Katherine Heigl? No, I haven't. So there's a scene in there where um, she's trying to get this guy to like her. And apparently Gerard Butler's asshole character is mentoring her as well without the dick. <laughs> and um, he's mentoring her. And so he gives her this vibe and tells her to put it up the dress. And they wear it going to a business meeting. Oh, he now works with Yeah. So he now works with it and they're there. Um, but it was like also like it was a, she was supposed to go on a date with this guy and it turned into a business meeting. So it wasn't intentional. Okay. It was supposed to be, you know, like just, you know, at, like apparently a mentor guy had the, the remote and was just like playing with it to get her to where she was a little bit more, you know, less, you know, ice frosty bitch. Cause you know, that's very them. Mm. And then, uh, it's very like, you know, male dominated. Yes. God uh, forbid uptight yeah. women need to be fixed. Yeah, exactly. But then so that was going on. And the problem is, is the remote because this this was before they had Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. So in the remote, the remote, some little kid picked it up, not realizing what it was when it fell. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, you could probably find that scene on YouTube, the scene on YouTube. It's the only good part of this, the movie. So you should probably just watch that one scene. Um, but Fair it's enough. funny in the way it's it's funny not in the fact of like she's got to go through this but because like i think that was the first time i've really seen that that kind of like um overt sexuality on screen mm -hmm. you know because i i saw it on the tv because i refuse to give gerard butler any money um <laughs> i have no problem with katherine heigl i just don't like george butler okay um, i know very little about him so I, just... I i have nothing against him i just he's like when i look at him as an actor he just does nothing for me so Let's it's see. kind of like it's kind of like looking at a wall and that's just your like it's just it's a wall you don't really want to look at and you don't know why but it's just not your wall um and so i was like all right so i watched it and i was like this movie is terrible because it comes out you know it does the whole it's like it's along the same veins of like what what women want uh, you know that kind of like alpha asshole yeah so um, it's it's that, basically what a man's idea of what women want exactly 
And so you watch it and you're just like, oh, this movie is terrible. But that scene was hilarious because it's the first time I've actually seen, like, it's one of the few times I've seen, like, women's sexuality be on hand. It was for laughs, which is not great. Mm -hmm. But it was also, like, the first time I'd really seen, like, you know, a woman be more exploratory out in public Mm -hmm. without, without it being something like, you know, uh, that Diane Ladd movie or, you know, something like that. Like it, it was, or, you know, some of the Harrison Ford movies or whatever. It was like, it was much more like a comedy style mm-hmm. versus some of the more, cause like they always skirt the line in rom-coms and stuff like that. Right. Like you can't get too much or you get a higher rating. Right. So it was, it was very interesting to see that. <laughs> Because it was it was a very hot scene, but mm-hmm. not not the Gerard Butler one, the the one in the book. <laughs> Just to clarify. <laughs> well, you know, I feel it, this is necessary. <laughs> well, you know, if if you wanted to go for you know, hot hot scenes in public, uh, you know, I think I'd just have to nominate my favorite, which is the Thomas Crown Affair, um, mm-hmm. because oh my goodness, those two are incendiary. Is that the Renee and Pierce yes. Brosnan one? Yes. Yeah. Yes, the remake. Uh, mm-hmm. I have not seen the original, but uh, yeah, they, they, <laughs> Renee Russo, I think? Yeah. I'm terrible with actor names. Um, it, and... is, it actually is Renee Russo. I couldn't remember because, like, in my head, the, 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 the lady that plays Phyllis on Y&R looks exactly like her, or is trying to look exactly like her. Michelle Stafford, I think, is her name. And so my brain just goes, the original copy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. But um, I don't know, but if, like, if you look at Michelle Stafford and you look at Renee Russo, you see they're very much alike, even the same color hair sometimes. So. Okay. Well, I no idea. I'm I'm not a soap watcher. Nothing against. I haven't just, watched soaps in don't watch them. many years, but um, Twitter mm-hmm. keeps me updated anyway. Okay. <laughs> if you follow, follow people like Dylan St. James and. I do. Uh, Robin and yeah, they talk about soaps a lot. I yeah, I think I I, a while ago because I don't follow them, I muted some hashtags just because I was Uh, like, I don't know what you're talking about, and I really yeah okay Um, yeah they post about it a lot. It keeps me clued into what's going on in American soaps because got it because Germany yeah and i mean like i I can watch the soaps here but i don't understand them so Mm. but i have to watch them for my patreons now because i i asked if they wanted me to watch them and they said yes so now i have to figure out what they're saying on the tv got it so (laughs) so i take it you are not learning german (laughs) i know i actually am i'm in a language course but like it's it's more of like what you're learning is very formal and what you're watching is not right so you don't always understand the context either got it yeah, so like I'm I'm in school. I started school two weeks before we went on lockdown again. Oh god. So we got through a little bit, <laughs> and then we've had a month off. So, and got then it. I go back for like five months. So got I'm it. Like, I'm like, can we make this like another extra month since you people keep giving me lockdown time? <laughs> but I mean, we were already scheduled for like two and a half weeks off. So. But yeah, I am. I actually am learning. It's just it's a complicated process of learning like. Because, like, we were in school for a week and already learning the accusative forms. Okay. I was like, guys, can can we learn, like, the basics first? Like, just give me basic words so I can form basic sentences. It's been so but it's long an immersion course, so you have to, to do it intensive. Yeah, I've, I've yeah. just, I took French for many, many, many years. And once was reasonably close to fluent and now i'm not (laughs) it's a muscle memory it it is and it isn't because i back when i used to commute on the metro um i used to have an invisible sign um that was that was only visible to francophone speakers (laughs) and it's it read something like on parle français ici we speak french here and so I, they would, and, and people would approach me, and I, you know, I would get, you know, excuse me, this, is this the train that goes to Bethesda? And and I would be like, est-ce que vous parlez français? And they'd be like, the relief that would flood across these people's faces was so it was like both horrifying and sweet because I can't imagine how difficult it is to navigate America 
uh, as a non-English speaker or as, as someone with very limited English. Um, yeah. And so what was funny is that I would sort of kick off and I, I'd like the people I met this way were all universally lovely, lovely people. I mean, I had these wonderful like little miniature conversations with people. And I would start out and I would feel like that muscle memory and I'd feel like, oh yeah, I can remember this, I can do this. And I don't know if it was being self-conscious or just reaching the limits of my memory of my vocabulary or what, but like five minutes in, I'd kind of freeze up and I'd be like, oh, oh, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> like not be able to say anything. <laughs> or, you know, I'd be like, I would sort of half get out of a sentence and I couldn't remember the word for whatever and it, it would get very very awkward and they were always super sweet like no this is the best conversation we've had in a week <laughs> and I'm like I'm really sorry for you <laughs> because right? I'm pathetic but uh yeah it was it was um it was it was kind of it was an interesting thing I I commute on the 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 regional um train now um instead of the, the metro so i i don't get those conversations anymore uh oh i don't commute at all right now because we're you know working <laughs> from no home anyway. yeah yeah time has no meaning and we're working from home and and all of that um but um it's it was it was interesting because i you know i if given me and give, give me enough time like at one point um, you know, I work in academic libraries and at, my, at a prior job, I had a, our, our person who purchased materials got this letter in French um, or an email or something. And I was able to translate it. Um, and I actually ran my translation. I, I'm still, believe it or not, I'm still friends with one of my high school French teachers was a lovely Belgian fair. woman. And um, I was able to contact her and say, Nicole, if I, if I got this right, is this okay? And she's like, you did a very, very good job. Yes, actually. It's all cool. And then I also, I, I, I gave her the re reply that I had intended, you know, had, had drafted um, once we figured out what it, what it meant. So that was kind of lovely, but, but, you know, that I had time, I could look things up. <laughs> it wasn't like, right on the spot <laughs> well, and that's that's exactly what chose me up is the on the spot part mm -hmm. because it's so hard because like in america we don't really learn languages as easily as like a lot of other places do we don't have to as much right well and which is funny thing is there's no actual american english designated language but anyway moving right. on um but so like i learned in high school i learned spanish i learned nothing um i learned i have a headache that and likewise because my name was jessica and the lady behind me was named was jessica as well so that was making it very easy to say hello um but but like you know in here and i learned uh french in school and college i learned enough to pass but that was about it i just i couldn't retain it uh the the whole gender thing really screws me up because i don't mm -hmm. know how to make the like cases match and stuff like that and it's oh my god in germany it makes me want to cry because there's, there's like, you know, when, like in Spanish, if it ends with an A, it's feminine, if it's O, it's, you know, masculine, there are ways. Right. Here, you take a pick and figure out which, new, which you know, like, gender goes with what item. Right, right. Because it's like, there's no form of communication. So I'm sitting here, like, trying to figure out how to write these sentences because I have to write them and do homework and stuff. And I'm like, honey, help. <laughs> like, help me because this makes no sense. And as I play Duolingo, like, 30 minutes to an hour a day while I'm out of school and a little bit less when I'm in school, but enough to keep me in the top 10 so I can go on to the next round because I'm competitive as hell. And so I do all that and I just, I get very confused. Well, it's yeah. Like, things like in French, I, like, I don't know. Like feminine words are evil. Yeah. Femina. Yeah. Is masculine gender. Mm hmm. And I, that, that kind of thing is always like, wait, like why? Why? <laughs> So, okay. Here. Because. The answer is because. <laughs> yes. Well, same. Here. Because it's like you have der Mann, die Frau, das Mädchen, der Jung. Right. So, wait, you've got der Junge, der Mann, die Frau, das Mädchen. One of these does not go with the other because it's like feminine, feminine, masculine, like, you know, 
Frau is ma is feminine, you know, um, uh, dare and is like masculine. So the two boys are masculine. The woman is feminine. The girl is neuter. She's not, she's like neutral. I'm like, y'all could have said like D Machen. Mm -hmm. But I know why they did that, because if you say D Machen, that can also be multiple, because D is, all, like, everything that is plural is is feminine. I'm like, y'all couldn't come up with a better solution than that? I I can't help you. I, I, but, I mean, like, it's, it's, but I had the same problem in, you know, in French, too. I was like, I don't, I don't know what you want me to do with these. It's like, my language does not have gingers. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right. I don't know. I don't know how you want me to translate that. Right. Like we don't say like, we don't call like the table, she. We call it the table. Right. Or a table, you know. Or we say it. You know. We don't say she. Ultimately, what did you like about this book? Ultimately, I just I thought it was a really excellent example of the friends to lovers uh, trope and a great sort of little slice of you know. The place where I live, and um, and it's hot as hell. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if you like steamy romance, this is definitely the one for you because there's a lot of um, content, content, but also like <laughs> a variety of content. Like it's, yes. it's not the same scenes over and over and over again. There's there's different levels of like there's voyeurism, there's intimacy, there's you know everything in between. So it's got a variety to choose from. Yes, because I to be fair, I usually don't read. <laughs> I know. So this is this is like a big outside my box. <laughs> <laughs> well, good for you for good for for stretching your boundaries. Exactly, and so I was like, okay, I was like, all right, I don't do well with with like the sex and erotica. I know that now, the erotic part, erotica not being the the genre, but like the active. Um, but it was nice to read one where it was like friends, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't, it wasn't like the the ones where it's like strangers and then they bang it out and then they're like together forever, instant love. Yeah. Instant love. So it it was nice for that benefit. Yes, I agree. Which um, is you know something that you should not say about sex. Yeah. And and also you know a, a pair of very very funny meddling moms who just i i'd love to i, I would read a, a a women's fiction novel about the two of them and their friendship <laughs> right wouldn't right? it be great yeah. something like so, something like in the like uh what is it dorothy uh something frank um like she's the one that writes one in the uh low country of, of uh south carolina but I, I say that because like she's I could see these I could see these two women doing something like that where like they have a house like a beach house mm -hmm. and and they just go and and cause chaos. Right, right. I can see them doing this. Yes. I think it's the Sullivan Island series. I don't know. One. I'm not familiar with it, but um, but yeah. I I used to read a lot because I I used to live in the Low Country once upon a time. So, it, or not Low Country, but close enough to Low Country that I went there like every weekend type close. Right. Um, and so it, it was very much a little bit like that. But, okay, so we're going to take a few seconds and talk about your book. Thank you. Because <laughs> I was not, I was, I was waiting until the end because sometimes it's better put it in the, in the end. Okay. And people you know are listening. Okay. Okay, so tell me about Acting Up. Acting Up is uh, also, as I said, a Friends to Lovers. It uh, is set in the American Regional Theater. Um, and the hero is a director and the heroine is a stage manager and they've been friends since college. So they've been friends for over 10 years. Um, but you know, the obstacle to them getting together is they work together. And so I am, am not usually a big workplace romance fan. I always find yeah, a, a lot of it to be a little on the side um, because of the power dynamics. But these yeah. two are partners. Um, and also theater for me, <laughs> because I I was an actress first. Um, I was an actress from, from the age of, of 10 to the age of 21. And oh, wow. yeah, and, um, and I, so I literally grew up in the theater. And so it, that has always kind of had a mental free pass for me because theater people are horny as hell man <laughs> and they 
always end up getting together and the relationships that crisscross in the theater is just <laughs> legion. Um, so, so, you know, the, so this Old book. school Hollywood. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the thing though. I mean, you're working in, you're working in, theater is also a great place to explore found family because there's so, mm -hmm. there's a lot of found family in this book too, because, you know, you'll end up working with, you know, not necessarily every production, but you'll you'll end up seeing the same faces time and again, who are lighting designers or set designers or, you know, actors or you know, costume people or whatever. And so, again, there's that that dynamic of like everybody in this production knows these two, and they've got enough inside jokes and enough, you know things that they do that everybody is basically going okay we're waiting <laughs> <laughs> like we, we've seen we've seen this before you are not the first couple so let's yeah exactly this is going to happen tapping that wrist like go yeah come on so... i've got a bet going when am i gonna win come on now <laughs> exactly so so it has it has all of that and um it's 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 the first of, of a series of four um, and all books are set either in theater um, or have theater people, or um, in one case, somebody jumps from theater to television. Two cases, actually. Um, so it's it's all in and around the entertainment industry. But I really wanted to start with a couple that were not actors, because yeah. you know we see if we, if we if we the vast majority of the time, and I've got nothing against these books. I you know eat them like candy um but the vast majority of books that we see in the entertainment industry they star performers yeah and i um i can tell you that the first of all the book has an hea second of all it starts in the audition room and it ends on opening night so i kind of wanted to have the arc of the production mm -hmm. echo the arc of the relationship Oh, and I think another reason I like the fact that you didn't focus on the stars also is, is like, like you said, you don't really see a lot of the behind the scenes romance, mm -hmm. but like, you know, it's there because I know people who like their, their job is to be extras. They're extras in movies and stuff because, you know, everything films in Atlanta right now for the most right. part. But even when it was filming in like Charlotte, like, you know, I have a friend who does a lot of that and her husband does as well. And I mean, like, you know, you know, the behind the scenes stuff because everyone's watching it it's not mm -hmm. just the stars that are having drama it's like every single person Everyone. in there has a drama yeah like well, it's, just, it, it's part and parcel of being in life you have it, to have drama yeah and there's a secondary relationship um in in this book that is between the set designer and the lighting designer and they're a couple of long standing um and so so yeah it's it's, it's utterly that utterly that because there's always stuff going on oh there's also another relationship between the leading man and the assistant stage manager and that's actually book three is their second chance so so yeah it's like you said it's when you work that closely and that emotionally with a group of people shenanigans are going to happen yes <laughs> it's they just gonna to. happen <laughs> like it, it it just has to you're too it's too insular of a community for things not to happen right because, you know, like I said, that's what I got from my friends who are, who, you know, work like, and that's, they spend like, they get half their, their bill money that right now they're obviously not, so they're having to do something else, but like, they get half their money every, you know, time getting that, like, mm -hmm. they're, they're seeing everything because when you're an extra or when you're like, you know, someone that's, you know, doing the group work or whatever, like mm -hmm. you see everything. Mm -hmm. So you know, I always think it's interesting when people take the behind the scenes people, because like, um, I read uh, Spoiler Alert by Olivia Day. Yeah, yeah, I did too. And one, and one thing I really liked was I liked how Marcus was talking about the back scenes people, because like you don't always hear people, you don't often hear about it in romance where the leads talk about the other people that are doing the other half of their work. Right. You know. Yeah. And so I, I think it's very nice that when people acknowledge those those people that put in the hard labor that maybe don't always get the recognition they deserve. And that's one of the points of tension in the book because in acting up is because the antagonist is actually um, her the the lead the female lead's college nemesis. Oh. Um, and yeah, and you know her it was, she was pretty much a bully. And, you know, she's, she's a brilliant actress and she's really, she's really right for the part. 
Um, but she's, you know, meanwhile, she's making life kind of miserable for our heroine. And she's also one of those people who really doesn't see the value in what she can't see. And all she can see is herself because she's a narcissist. Right. Uh, this is actually based on a real person who was my college nemesis. I, I did go to I did go to drama school. Um, and uh, <laughs> I will I will not name this person, I, but she did become a fairly successful actress. School. And, um, and she was just, you know, it's one of these people who's like, just, why are you constantly picking on me? What, why, is there a sign on my back? Leave me alone. (laughs) Like, introspecting yourself, not on me. Yeah, yeah. I get it. And, and like, it comes out when? It comes out January 22nd. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's, I'm I'm going back and forth with the cover right you know right now. Um, hopefully, you have a final cover in in, uh, in a little over a week. Um, fingers crossed. Um, and it's, it's really really cute. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really excited about it. So thanks for letting me babble on about it for a few minutes. <laughs> no, it's all, it's all good. Like I want to make sure you had time to talk about it because I know you're really excited and it's your debut, and so mm-hmm. I think it's really important to kind of highlight that. Thank you. Thank you very that much. That you've worked really hard on getting here because I know I've been talking to you for a couple of years and you've been working really hard to get here and it's been it's been interesting watching your journey and I know oh. that it's been a, it's been um nonlinear some days. <laughs> well, I think I think any any publishing journey almost any is nonlinear um yeah. because it's 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 tough and it's you know I for many years I I really really wanted to you know trad pub deal traditional publishing you know and my i had an agent and we worked really hard to get there and it just didn't pan out and so i i made the decision to to self-publish and uh, we'll see how it goes (laughs) one thing is is like indian self-publishing does really well in romance as well because Mm -hmm. there's um a wider network now of yeah of people that are willing to take the time to not just they don't just elevate themselves, they elevate everybody. So yeah. there's a lot more names that you can find that you probably would not have otherwise. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's a nice and, community. I see it a lot on Twitter. Yes, I do too. And um, and I I'm I have loved being part of that community. And you know, we've had some we have had some great successes. We've had some hard conversations, and I appreciate those as well. Um, yeah. And I've I am very grateful for that for that community, um, which is mostly my pocket friends on Twitter, <laughs> and and they are you know I have a, I, they they are mentioned in the acknowledgments of this book because <laughs> I really really would not be doing this without them. Um, so so yeah, and I, and I know I see you talking on people to people not on people but on people's <laughs> timelines I should say you talk on people's timelines all the time and I, again I notice your name because. Well, Buck stands out. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is it is my pen name. Yeah, um, and, but, but it stands out. Like, you, yeah. you can see it right away. Like, it's it's one of those easy things, and then you're, like, Avatar, and so it's very easy to kind of, like, find you. And so mm-hmm. I see you talking, and I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I still have I still have not forgotten. You sent me a long time ago. You sent me a fishing book that I still have not read, but it's in my, it's in my uh, emails. Oh, gosh. Well, that one, when, that, that one will probably come out next year, I'm thinking. Oh, good. So, see, uh, I'm going to read the, the copy you sent me because I have not forgotten it when you sent it to me last in 2019. But yeah, and it's it, ha- it, <laughs> it was a hard a, moving year of 2020. <laughs> it already has a new title um, mm-hmm. and that, that is Angling for You. Oh, nice. <laughs> I can't believe it took me this long to come up with that title because it's absolutely a no brainer <laughs> because the heroine is a fly fishing uh, guide. Um and uh, and that one uh, speaking of nerve-wracking um so my husband and i went to norway a few years ago mm-hmm. and my husband is an angler i am not i have i have <laughs> taken i've taken some lessons i have done some things uh, i have decided is is not really my thing um and and but he did beta read that book for me um for the for the fly fishing parts and let me tell you having your spouse sit next to you on airplanes and Norwegian trains, I mean, probably any train, but it happened to be, we were going to Norway, um, 
<laughs> with his pen out, marking up your manuscript. <laughs> it's a little nerve wracking. <laughs> yes. I, uh, di- different way, but same because my husband does all the editing on this podcast. Mm-hmm. So when he, I'm like, if he doesn't laugh, I'm like, oh my God, was it really that bad? Was I really that bad? You know, like, cause it's like the rejection syndrome that comes with ADHD hits in high then. And I'm like, it's bad. It's bad. And then he's like, no, I was fine. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. If yeah, you're okay. sure. <laughs> Breath if you're out. positive. Yeah. You you know what I said because once I record I never hear myself again on these episodes because I just I can't do it there's just it, I can't I can't listen to myself which is why I'm always worried and I'm like please give me feedback y'all please please cuz I promise I'm not crazy I just I really need feedback cuz I don't know what I said um <laughs> I remember it when I made it but I don't remember anything past that my my brain goes too fast after that got but, it but um the ADHD hyper focusing man um and so it's different, but, but some are, because he's also like, he's also baited some of my stuff that I've written and stuff like that too. And so, cause like, I'm not, I'm not a writer and that I don't have any plans on doing anything with it. Sometimes I just want to write things out in my head. Cause I make things up in my head all day long, it, but still nerve wracking. Like I even made him read my fan fiction from back in the day. That was interesting. Okay. Yeah, I used to write fan fiction. It's, it had been a long I've, time since I've, I've written, written fan fiction. I, I, yeah. I wrote Miss Miss Fisher fan fiction back then, a few years ago. It was fun. It's it, it's comfortable. Like you, I learned I learned more about myself writing in those worlds than I did, you know, ignoring them. Especially when I could play Fix It. There you go. Because I was watching Stargate Atlantis at the time. There was a lot of Fix It that I needed to do. All right. Then. Women. Anyway, um, but the the point being, I get it because you're like you're very nervous. You're like, but but, and then you have to look at the notes. and You're just like. Oh, I don't know if I like these notes or not. They're not bad notes, but I just don't know if I like these notes with whom they came from. Yeah, he was, he was uh, he was not um it was most of the stuff that he had feedback on was very factual. It's like, you know, mm. total, you know, rookie mistake things that I was just like, Oh yeah, well that makes sense. Like never lay a fishing rod on the ground. <laughs> yeah. Uh okay, now that you've mentioned it, yeah, that makes total sense. You no, know, you're not you don't wear jeans under your waders. They're they're too thick, they're too heavy. They're, you know, <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. And and yeah. but still just having, you know, I mean it was one of the things we did like like the night before we left was print out this massive manuscript and you know, so that he could literally pull out his pen and, you know, make notes in the margins. <laughs> and it was like okay. Uh, I don't wanna look and see where you're at in the manuscript now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's just a sense of like and it's not even a bad dread, but the dread is just there because it's your work and your spouse. Right. And, and right. it's a different relationship if it was like your friend looking at it, right? Right. Yeah. It's or your critique partners. Or... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. So. It's, I'm well, <laughs> I'm well on that train. Yes. Yes. No direction needed there. But, um, right. okay. So one last thing is yep. what is one book or podcast or something that you've been really enjoying that surprises you it surprises me mm. huh um huh, i don't know if i've had something that surprised me lately let me think, like quickly look at my what i've been reading recently i mean like it can be like you were surprised you like the author you were surprised about the book content you were surprised of where it was set, you know, stuff like just like random surprises. Um, I try to make things as open as I can. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I guess I guess looking back on my uh, recent reads, uh, I recently read Jenny Holiday's A Princess for Christmas, and it was like one of those things where it was Jenny Holiday and was on sale, so it was like a no brainer for me mm-hmm. because I, I really like Jenny's work. And I start reading it, and I'm like. This is the sexy Hallmark movie that all of us have been asking for forever. <laughs> this is so much fun because I, I like the occasional Hallmark holiday movie, but I'm not a huge fan of, of that in general. It's just it's kind of something that like I have to be in just the right mood for. And, you know, there's there's one specific one that I like a lot that I, I kind of just return to because I know it's not going to make me roll my eyes too much. Which movie? A Crown for Christmas. I think I know that one. 
which it's got um well, it's got Danica McKellar first of all and she's just adorable. Oh, yeah. I know the one you mean though. And yeah. then and and I think it's Rupert 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 blonde guy was in uh ver- the more recent version of Persuasion. Um Yeah, I know the one you mean. Yeah. And and it's it's just really cute and it's got a bratty, you know, preteen and she's hilarious. Um, and not a plot mop at all. And I ended up like, buying it. It was on sale for like four or five bucks on Amazon. And I bought it a while ago. And I just sort of like tried it out once a year. And my husband yeah. will come by. <laughs> It'll be like, what are you watching? That was the one where she was the um, person that lived at the, the New York hotel. She was like the maid or whatever. She was a maid. And then she ends up getting yeah. hired as a governess for the yeah. for the, the young, bratty, preteen princess. Um, and because. Yeah, like someone in his faculty like saw it. I think it was like like one of his head people saw it and was like, "Oh no, you'd be great for this job." Exactly, his She's butler, like, I think ah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's just and and actually, Jenny Holiday is a princess for Christmas. It is pretty much almost that movie, but with the genders kind of reversed. And um, in you know, there's you know, he's he isn't he isn't going to come and be a governess for her, but he has he's the one. He has a little sister. <laughs> And um, the little sister is, is, you know, precocious and fun. And it's just, a, it's just really, it's just fun. And so I, I don't know what I was expecting. I guess I was just sort of expecting Jenny Holiday book, which I knew I would enjoy. Um, but I, I, I was just delighted to, to have this, like, sexy Hallmark movie <laughs> in book form. Which I mean, valid. I love I love Hallmark movies. I have to admit, I watch them a lot. Mm-hmm. Thankfully, there's there are ways to watch it here, even though you don't get Hallmark. Um, oh. yeah, yeah. If you go to certain if you go to certain websites, you can find them, and they're oh. not illegal websites. Okay. Um, but they're uploaded, so you can watch them. And so I'll watch them. Like my husband and I, every year we watch um movies. Mm-hmm. And so this year we watched five movies. Uh, I think four of them were Hallmark. I know one of them was TV one, but uh, the rest were Hallmark. And so we just kind of talked about it and, and, you know, what we enjoyed and stuff like that. It's like Patreon exclusive stuff. So Mm -hmm. it's just, it's something to kind of keep us in the spirit because Christmas is huge here. It's just not as huge as like it is at home when it comes like to, you know, that kind of stuff, that feel good kind of stuff. So you've got Christmas markets. I love those. No, we don't. You don't? <laughs> Not now. Oh, well, that's true. But I mean, in general. <laughs> in general, but I've never been to one because I came at the end of December. Well, I came at the mid-December last year, and I didn't have the money to come into town because I was trying to save our money to get married. And then this year. Of course, yes. Well, hopefully next year you'll be able to enjoy them because I actually did go to Germany for Christmas one year. Um, back in 1997 or eight, I think. And, oh my God, we had such a good time. I really want to go because like people were really disappointed because I live in a fairly big town. Mm-hmm. I say fairly big town because it's got like over 250,000 people. And it's funny, this is a very large town in German standards. And I'm like, okay, I'm from Atlanta, but okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. Like I'm used to like a lot more people in a very small space. But um, so we have a bunch of people here and they were like, it's closed. And like they, they had some things open because they had some of them open. They were like, you know, very spaced apart. There were like six things open, but I just didn't have the money this year because I was trying to save up for other Christmas gifts, gifts yeah. and stuff for my husband. So, you know, but next year I'm hoping that we're going to have some so I can enjoy it with the vaccine coming out. I'm hoping that will be a little bit more tolerable because, you know, Germany's big on science that's nice mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a nice change of pace yeah um and so i, I really want to go to the christmas markets i was so disappointed this year i couldn't go i was so angry and sad because i was like really this was the one thing i wanted like the right. one thing at christmas this year was i wanted to do this one thing yep but not so much yeah and it just got it just kind of sucks because it's also our first year of marriage like so i really wanted to go to the christmas market and do all like the like lovey-dovey coupley things you know Drink glue vine and walk around. Well, I could drink that. He couldn't. He's allergic to alcohol. So. Oh, okay. Yes. 
yeah. like he could have hot chocolate or we could both have hot chocolate because like the one of the big city market areas is like right where our big mall is and so we could have easily gotten like a cup of hot cocoa and walked around because there's a there's a bakery that also has like a little like restaurant upstairs and so you could like because i went up there and ate there one day before i know i went when i was supposed to not but i, I went because i had to eat because i was getting bad and my diabetes was acting funky about it so i went and had something to eat right quick up there and uh they've got like fresh hot cocoa and stuff mm -hmm. like that and i was like i would and it was really good cocoa because i had it mm -hmm. it was really good cocoa and so it's just like i want to do all that kind of stuff and i couldn't and it sucked but it's life you can only do so much so on the plus side we had a he had a lot of time to edit this year instead which there is good because it was like four episodes in december and four pa well three patreon episodes because we had a, a triple feature on one of them instead of having like four different ones so he was a badass to Excellent. quote to quote the heathen bosoms people he was a badass <laughs> he he's just keeping being a badass so yeah he um he also did like the fin the final 2020 episode which mm -hmm. we were in mm -hmm. and so he did that as well so he he's he's an awesome guy i love him dearly don't understand half the stuff he talks about but i love him dearly well there you go <laughs> <laughs> you and know, i do like, I, I do have to take off yeah but, but this has been enjoy so much fun. your day you too well enjoy your <laughs> evening enjoy uh, enjoy saying goodbye to 2020. Heck yeah yeah because in case someone doesn't realize we're, we're recording this in december so <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah uh, New Year's Eve, in fact. <laughs> yes, exactly. Be like, y'all, I told you I was ahead of the game. So right. this one will be premiering in February. I decided to put it in there okay. because February is lust month. There you go. I was like, <laughs> this book. Yep. <laughs> Appropriate. Uh, Appropriate, so indeed. It, it will be appearing in lust month. I'm trying to make themes every month. So <laughs> well, you go have fun and yeah, I will you, you go too. put some food in. Yes. We can put in our pizza and our mozzarella sticks because we're high class people over here. Oh, excellent. <laughs> we jazz up the pizza, so at least it's not quite frozen pizza. <laughs> Enjoy. Uh, I am. <laughs> you have fun. And it was really <laughs> nice talking to you. Great talking to you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>did you enjoy that episode because i know i did i will give you all the information for adele buck's acting up which is her indie debut and everyone should totally be talking about that right right i have it i haven't had a chance to read it yet but i definitely have it and it's on my list for next month this month was just really busy with the black author readathon and i kind of got sucked into that as well as like, there was also like the lunar new year one and there was also the Fantasy Romance February, which I didn't find out until about too late in the season, so I didn't get a chance to read it. But Acting Up will act as the backstage hookup prompt for the Challenging Damsels. I'm trying to promote that out there because I think that we all need to kind of go against our grain and find new things to read. I also covered some more of that that I will be talking about in the wrap-up <laughs> on YouTube in early March. The first week of March, I'm going to have things like float out, but I'm going to be taking the first weekend off because that is my wedding anniversary. It is my one year anniversary to the amazing Sven, and I want to dedicate that to him. You can find me at all the usual places linked in the show notes, which is Damsel's Podcast, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. <laughs> I almost forgot Twitter and I'm always on Twitter. There's also the damselspodcast.com. There's patreon.com slash damselspodcast. Again, all that will be linked below. And I will also include Adele's information. Mostly I see her on Twitter, and that is at underscore Adele Buck. So if you want to check her out, I highly recommend it. She also runs, or at least is a part of, Indie Debuts of 2021, which is Debuts 2021 on Twitter. And I think it's really cool because there's a lot of indies that are coming out with books all the time, and they're debuting, and I really want to highlight that because that's how I found so many people. And I think it's amazing, and I love it, and it's kind of nice to have indies bumping around, right? Indies and self-published, depending on how you 
roll that out. Okay, so I am done for now. <laughs> Until next month, again, magic. And I have several things up my sleeve for that. Maybe even a bonus episode if I can work it out. I hope you guys have a really good day. I hope that March comes in and it's new and exciting. And I hope that it kind of washes away all the snow <laughs> for the four people that have been hit by the polar vortex. I mean, we are no exception here in Germany. We got hit with a pretty hard as well. So it's not, you know, I get it. And so I want March to come in to wipe down all the cold to let the crocuses spring up and let the, the newness grow and for the magic of spring to kind of step in. And I'm going to push that out there because I think we all need that. Please enjoy the rest <laughs> of whatever you want to do for yourself. That's fun. That's it. Just have fun. That's it. That's all I want you to do because the world has been chaotic and we could all use a little bit of self-indulgence and fun, right? Okay, guys. I hope you come back next episode, which will be in the middle of March, because I'm trying to do this every other every other week if I can, and that's how that rolls. Okay, guys. <laughs> Bye. Mm -hmm.